Hey guys, it's Hink here. So I got a really spicy one for you today. It's going to be all about why rest days aren't needed. Basically part two. Now the first one was looking more specifically at like the fundamental behind it. This is taking all of the published medical literature, looking at using any kind of penile enlargement and seeing what kind of regimens they use. And so according to the actual medical literature on penis enlargement, not theoretical stuff, what do they recommend as far as how many days per week specifically are we going to answer with this? And guys, I will warn you, like Drake's got me hyped up with all this like 20 V1 versus stuff. And like a lot of these discussions, I feel like I'm alone, but like fighting against everybody else who feels so strongly otherwise. So I might be on one tonight. So we'll just see, see what happens with this video. Say, bro. Who the hell is this? I'm the type of stand on business. The one man arm against 50. And guys, before we get into it, if you don't mind, just take a second and thumbs up the video. It takes a quick second and it does it's and it's totally free. So it means a lot to me. So take one second and do that. Thank you. So the first paper we're going to talk about is Ziegelman at all. OK, it's this paper here. And basically what it shows that a minimum of three hours per day, seven days of week leads to almost an eight tenths of an inch difference in length. OK. Now, this paper is a little tricky because basically those that did not use penile traction, they lost a bunch of length and those that used it actually gained significant length. That's where like the the like the plus minus combined leads to a difference of eight tenths of an inch. But regardless, guys, paper number one, seven days a week, about a difference of eight tenths of an inch. So this next paper we're going to look at, Gontero et al., five hours daily, seven days a week lead to a stretched penile length improvement by a mean of 0.83 centimeters. And yes, guys, these initial papers we're going to be talking about are looking at the extender data, usually in people with Peyronie's disease, guys. We are going to get to people that don't have Peyronie's disease and are just normal, like people with that use extenders for their like short penis syndrome. But this is just how we're going to start. So here's another paper here of Levine et al. 2008. It basically showed that starting at two hours per day, then increasing to eight hours per day, seven days a week. Once again, you guys can see the theme here already. It led to an increased stretch penile length of 0.5 to 2 centimeters. And it's interesting, actually, in this paper. So sometimes with Peyronie's disease, you actually have like an hourglassing or like a denting of your actual penile tissue. This is one of the few papers that actually showed in a girth increase from using an extender. But once again, guys, it's largely from like fixing that deformity, not like actually causing girth growth. So here's another paper here, guys, looking at the Restorex device using a six month trial, seven days per week for at least 15 minutes a day led to an increase in stretch penile length from two to 2.3 centimeters in length. OK, guys, so almost a full inch once again, seven days a week. All right, guys, but now we're going to be breaking down some data because I, I have already made a video. If you haven't seen it, it's about like, what's the optimum duration? Like how long should you be doing PE? Like is basically more better. But here are some of the papers that I wanted to break down again, because I th do think that there are some interesting findings that we can incorporate into this discussion here. OK, so this first one, once again, is Yaffe et al. And it actually has this really pronounced graph here and you guys can see it. And it actually showed that when you use an extender, for basically less than three hours per day versus greater than three hours per day, there is a significant difference in as far as like your actual stretch penile length. But you guys have to look here. The stretch penile length is measured in millimeters. OK, and so it's saying less than three hours per day is two millimeters, but over three hours a day is two is four point four millimeters. Basically, it's saying for an additional three hours per day, you can get an additional two millimeters of length. You know, once again, guys, this is just one paper, small subject. It does show, once again, that, you know, more is better. So it would lead to more along the arguments that not taking a rest day is potentially better. But this is limited data, guys. So just take all of this with a grain of salt. So here's another paper here, Abern published in 2012, and it basically showed they had a conclusion. They actually, now there's only like 35 patients on this trial, okay? But they did conclude that for every additional hour per day used, once again, most importantly, seven days a week, it showed that there was an additional 0 0.38 centimeters per additional hour per day. The one thing that I couldn't find on the study because I didn't have access to the full published paper was like what duration, like whether this is six months, whether this is a year, but an additional 0.38 centimeters, point like four centimeters, that is a significant difference, at least in my opinion. It does once again give more credence to the more is better in the sense that basically the more tension exposure you have, the better. 
All right, guys, so now we're going to be start talking about guys that don't have Peyronie's disease and just have basically small penis syndrome, meaning they have a completely normal penis. They just want to make it bigger, okay? Like many of you guys probably watching this video. What they found, this is Colpi et al. found that, it, once again, small series, only about nine guys, by wearing it six hours per day for a minimum of four months, seven days a week, okay, in this study showed that you had an increase in your stretch penis length by 1.8 centimeters, guys. There was one guy on this trial who apparently gained 3.1 centimeters, okay? So well over an inch. So here's another study here. I'm not going to try to butcher this. Well, I'll try to butcher it. Nikubat in 2011, it looked at, once again, using penile traction therapy, four to six hours per day, seven days a week. You started at basically lower tension for the first two weeks and then nine hours a day until the end of the third month once again showed that there was a significant increase in penile length okay and so for both the flaccid and the stretch flaccid so the mean of this study they increased their flaccid length from 8.8 .8 to 10.5 so almost two centimeters difference in flaccid state and then from the stretch state from 11.5 to 13.2 so once again almost a full two centimeters in length in three months of use guys seven days a week so here's an interesting paper this was looking at people that are post prostatectomy meaning that though typically for prostate cancer guys will have surgically have their prostate removed which leads to penile shrinkage this is interestingly one of the few studies that i could find that actually doesn't do seven days a week for all of the participants they had a couple different arms one was a control one was five days a week okay for 30 minutes a day and then one was 30 minutes twice per day, seven days a week, as you can see in this study diagram here. Now, most importantly, what they found was that basically you increased penile length by 1.6 centimeters in this trial. So there was a significant improvement in the trial, but they did do a separate analysis of the different groups. So the 30 minutes once a day, five days a week versus the 30 minutes twice a day, seven days a week. And actually, they found that no statistical difference between the groups regarding penile length or erection function, with the exception, okay, of orgasmic and intercourse satisfaction domains were higher in the longer treatment protocol in the guys doing seven days a week. Now, guys, this is just one excerpt of like one study, but basically they said that like, no, is it going to make a difference as far as size? But the guys that did it seven days a week actually had higher sexual satisfaction. Now, if you guys have seen my video, I just made one about how basically the stretch stimulus, like the secret benefit of doing PE is basically you get more nitric oxide creation by doing this. So by basically just by stretching the penile tissue, it literally signals pathways to create nitric oxide. One of the things that a lot of the people say in this field is like, oh, you get overworked, but it's like, if your penile tissue is getting overworked and you were having decreased erectile function, wouldn't that at least show up as far as like se decreased sexual satisfaction? But they're saying that there's no difference in erectile function. So this is literally a study looking at five days a week versus seven days a week. And it said that there was no difference. And so you could take that to say, yes, you need a rest day because the five days a week did just as well with actually less work. Or you could use that to say, hey, the guys that were doing seven days a week grew just as much but had better sexual satisfaction so this is this is a great paper i love this paper here but let's keep going and so guys any of you guys that have been following me recently know that for like the past six months i've been talking about doing routines twice a day even though sometimes people don't want to give me my flowers for talking about that but that's okay i don't need to get flowers <laughs> or for recognition I never let a statue tell me how nice I am. but this all started and i'm going to give my props to where it came from is when i interviewed dr judson brandeis on a live the creator of the p-long protocol and he talked about doing the twice a day protocol and it really did make sense. But so here's this paper here, the P-Long protocol, and it basically twice daily penile traction for 20 minutes at a time. So 20 minutes in the morning, then 20 minutes in the afternoon, and then pumping basically twice a day as well. So 12 minutes in the morning, 12 minutes in the afternoon. And in this study now, it's not a randomized trial. There were This was just the single arm that they used. But in this trial, they showed that in six months, there was eight tenths of an inch gained in length and a half an inch in girth, okay? And you can see this this chart put up here. Now, you know, I, had, I made a whole video about this P-Long trial and I actually started this big debate, which is how I got him on my like channel in the first place. But it's a, it's, it still is a good paper. There's definitely a lot to be learned. Once again, if anything, this kind of 
proves my point that you don't need rest days because this was twice a day, seven days a week. So guys, here are some important slum summary slides. This one was from Translational Andrology and Urology, and it looked at basically all of the papers on penile traction, whether it be for Peyronie's disease or short penis syndrome. And you can see here, guys, that you know, it doesn't explicitly state, but all of these papers, seven days a week, okay? I do like how it summarized the findings. You can see like SPL all the way on the right under efficacy. It shows like the actual, the actual curve correction and like the flaccid penile length, stretch penile length, SPL, and then gains that occurred with that. But you can see like all of these studies summarized. I thought it was nice. And you can also see the duration, how long they actually use their extender for. But most importantly, all of these studies, seven days a week. And here's another great summary slide that I found from one of the papers looking at penile traction monotherapy for Peyronie's disease. And once again, guys, you can see the duration and the changes in the stretch penile lengths clear as day. And all of these papers, once again, guys, seven days a week. So what are my takeaway conclusions? Now, keep in mind, guys, some of these papers actually did measure more than just stretch penile length that also measured erect length. Okay. And so we do have evidence that penis enlargement works, guys. Like it's not some hocus pocus myth like it's real with these studies they largely recommended seven days a week now guys i have my own enlargement course once again you can see how i break down actual published medical literature not theoretical stuff okay not looking at tendons i'm looking at actual penile tissue and this is where i make my conclusions and my recommendations when it comes from actual penile enlargement if you guys are interested the course is in the description okay but I couldn't find a single paper that says that supports the use of rest days. Now, guys, you have to understand, like, there has not been a published paper showing that parachutes work. We don't have published literature to say that parachutes help to save lives if you're jumping out of an airplane. So just because there's no, like, evidence, the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence, okay? But this is just looking at the medical literature. So just be careful. Please, nobody put words in my mouth, okay? And anybody that might be watching this video and getting offended at what I'm saying right now because it might contradict some of their other points, just understand what I'm doing is just going through the published literature and making my conclusions based on what I see. I hope that if somebody disagrees with this video, they make a counter video saying, yes, Hink made these points, but this is the medical literature that actually proves what he's saying is incorrect. I would love that and I would probably learn something. So that being said, guys, I don't think rest days are necessary. I don't have a high level of evidence saying that more is better. Now, especially when you're starting off, I think rest days are very important because that's when you're most prone to injury. And guys, I've made so many videos about how you're most prone to injury and the actual physiology behind that. So if you're interested, just check out some of my prior videos, guys. But I think that you are more prone to potentially damaging your tissue because the basically the, the more you do PE, the more you're going to put yourself at risk kind of fact of the matter so those that are only doing it five days a week are going to by definition be less risk of injury than those that are doing it seven days a week in all of these studies using extenders for as many as like nine hours a day seven days a week the actual rate of injury exceedingly low guys no major no serious major injuries which i kind of find hard to believe but they were low patient studies but what i'm saying is that if you're starting off you should not be doing it seven days a week okay i think that that's at least once you get a good like month or three under your belt is when you would want to transition to seven days a week and guys once again i talk about all that in my course and I've said it before, guys, if you are going to be doing seven days a week, you have to make sure that you are recovering adequately. If you are doing like these marathon sessions, maybe you do need a rest day, especially if you're doing way more risky stuff like clamping. This is specifically talking about rest days and length work, not girth work. Big difference, big distinction there. Because if you are doing this every day, you need to, you know, in my opinion, you need to be on something like a Tadalafil or Cialis, like Sildenafil, Viagra. Talk to your doctor about that. I've made several videos about the use of basically PDE5 inhibitors, how they benefit you. Of course, I also think you need to be on some sort of citrulline-based supplement okay guys of course vigor it's getting amazing reviews we always sell out because it's very popular because it's very good guys like what do you want me to sell you but it rejuvenates your actual endothelial tissue keeps your tissue healthy leads to amazing workouts in the gym and also amazing erection quality so if you're interested check it out but guys that'll do it for today let me know what you think do you think rest days are necessary do i have this wrong and you know i'd love it if somebody in the comments wrote i think you're wrong hink and here's a paper that shows why you're wrong because i'm always trying to learn guys i, I don't think i'm some like savant
want. Listen to me. I'm Hank and I know everything. I do think there are some some guys on here that come off as that, but I'm certainly not one of them and I'm open to be corrected. And I would love to have to make a video saying, hey guys, you know what? I actually got this wrong. <laughs> so anyways, that'll do it, guys. Remember, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement, but you are enough just as you are. Catch you in the next class. Peace and love. And guys, if you're still watching, of course, all of these supplements, the links in the description, but they're available on leviathansupps.com. Okay. We have a virility, which is basically allows you to shoot ropes, improve your semen quality, semen consistency, semen volume. We have your fortitude, which is our horny goat based supplement, horny goat weed based supplement, which allows for better nerve function of your penile tissue, better erection quality, better nitric oxide production in the penile tissue. We have our shield, which helps to improve your sensitivity, reverse nerve damage, keep your penile tissue healthy as far as the nerve component. We have our vitality, which is our testosterone based supplement that is going to like literally boost your testosterone up to 200 points. Okay. Based on real clinical evidence, I've already made a video on that. And of course, we have our safeguard, guys. If you're concerned about Peyronie's disease or penile fibrosis, scarring, or just don't want all the damage that can occur when you're doing PE, then you can, of course, take our safeguard supplement. Vigor the OG you guys already know about. If you need equipment like pumps, peakmalephysique.com. If you need to reach me for consultation, patreon.com slash docate. Okay, please don't send me a Reddit DM asking how you can contact me. That's how. If you want to join in any of these discussions, my Reddit is r slash hate. If you want to support Cali, link is in the description. And you can basically make a donation for essentially the cup of the price of a cup of coffee. And in return, you'll get 26K wallpapers. All right, guys, that'll do it. Until the next one. Peace and love. Dr. Hank got the plug on the health, yeah. Got you thinking about your wealth, yeah. In his office, no stuff.